Every kid's dream is to become a hero. A superhero. When I was a kid, I wanted to be Spider-Man. I was the nerdy, skinny kid that everyone bullied, and deep down, I hoped that when school ended and I walked through the heavy metal doors, I would be reincarnated into a confident, skilled individual. As an adult, the Marvel Universe still has a huge impact on my life, but not as a confidence booster, more of a conversation starter. Back in the day, I spent hours on Discord nerding out about Marvel lore. 2003, we got our first taste of Marvel in Lego form with sets based off Sam Raimi's Spider-Man. Spider-Man's first chase, the origins, and the final showdown. These sets were enjoyable, especially with the play features, from a gate mechanism, transforming feature, and a moving cable car when a winch is turned. The only flaw with the 2003 Spider-Man sets is the yellow skin minifigures, as Marvel is a licensed theme and focuses on realistic attributes. A year later, LEGO released Spider-Man Street Chase, which was actually my first LEGO set, and four additional Spider-Man 2 sets. Doc Ock's Bank Robbery, Spider-Man's Train Rescue, Doc Ock's Hideout, and Fusion Lab. After the release of the Spider-Man 2 sets, the Spider-Man line concluded. Unfortunately, LEGO never released Spider-Man 3 sets. Following an 8-year hiatus, LEGO Marvel returned. 2012, the world was supposed to end, but instead the box office hit Avengers debuted, making over $1.5 billion. Alongside the film, four primary sets debuted, from Quinjets to Avenging Cycles. 2012 didn't only focus on Avengers, but X-Men characters Wolverine, Deadpool, and Magneto. In conjunction, we got our first Ultimate Spider-Man set, with a new version of Spider-Man, martial artist Iron Fist, and tentacled villain Doc Ock. 2013 continued with extremely strong sets, two based off of the Ultimate Spider-Man, introducing Venom, Nick Fury, Nova, Doctor Doom, Beetle, and J. Jonah Jameson. In addition, three sets based off Iron Man 3 debuted, though most of the sets are inaccurate or didn't even appear in the film. 2014 continued with strong sets based off of the Ultimate Spider-Man, Avengers Assemble, Guardians of the Galaxy, and X-Men. 2015 gave us six sets in conjunction with Age of Ultron, two off of the Ultimate Spider-Man, a set based off the first Ant-Man movie, and a direct-to-consumer Hell Carrier. 2016 introduced the Mighty Micro sub-theme to both the Marvel and DC line. In addition, we got two sets based off Avengers Assemble, three off Civil War and the Ultimate Spider-Man, and a final set based off the first Doctor Strange movie. 2017 was a mixed bag for Marvel. The minifigures were stellar, but the sets were lackluster. We got our first versions of Miss Marvel, Red She-Hulk, Red Hulk, She-Hulk, Yondu, Mantis, and Hela. While we got poor builds like Detroit Steel Strikes, the Milano vs. the Abolus, and Thor vs. Hulk Arena Clash. 2018 brought one of the greatest movies ever, Infinity War. And while the movie was groundbreaking, the sets weren't. All the sets were mediocre at best, with the exception of the Sanctum Sanctorum Showdown. Additionally, there's two sets based off the first Black Panther movie and one based off Ant-Man and the Wasp. 2019 started the downfall of LEGO Marvel. The year started off poorly with the worst design sets we've ever seen, such as Spider-Man Bike Rescue, Spider-Man Spider-Crawler, and Spider-Mech vs. Venom. April continued to drop piss-poor sets, with Captain America's Outrider Attack, War Machine Buster, Avengers Ultimate Quidjet, and Avengers Compound Battle. The sets were released to coincide with Avengers Endgame, but only the compound is based off the film, while the others are just random sets. The only saving grace for Marvel 2019 was the sets based off Spider-Man Far From Home. 2020 saw the end of the Mighty Micros line and introduction of the affordable Marvel mechs. The mechs aren't targeted for my age demographic, but gave children a cost-effective way to obtain desirable characters. While I can disregard the mechs, the rest of the 2020 lineup was dreadful. If we take a look at the 2020 lineup, the sets are just inferior. The Avengers Truck Takedown is one of the worst sets I've ever seen. The only decent set for 2000 2020 was Taskmaster's Ambush, which was technically a San Diego Comic Con exclusive. It included desirable minifigures, an exclusive version of Black Widow and Taskmaster, and our first ever Red Guardian. 2021 started off poorly with sets based off the underperforming film Eternals, random mechs, and Spider Man sets. April 2021 gave us moderate sets based off Shang-Chi. The year started off abysmally, but in the middle of the year, Lego altered the path that they were on. During the the LEGO group started working on the Infinity Saga line, which gave LEGO the ability to produce sets of older reference material. We got amazing sets like the Guardian Ship, Bro Thor's new Asgard, Dragonflyer, and Iron Man Ironmonger Mayhem. 2022 
start off with Spidey and his amazing friend sets, targeting a preschool audience. April dropped the delayed mechs, focusing on Wolverine, Iron Man, and Black Panther. June gave us advantageous builds for Infinity Saga, with I Am Groot and Iron Man Armory. A month later, one of the greatest Marvel sets ever dropped was Sanctum Sanctorum. Even though the set is a beauty, I wish it was more a complete build, as it's designed as a corner building. 2023 is the year of redemption for LEGO Marvel. After years of mediocre sets, LEGO blasted through grand sets like Miles Morales vs. Morbius, Ghost Rider Mech and Bike, the Hulkbuster The Battle of Wakanda, and the Avengers Quinjet. LEGO introducing the Infinity Saga sets in 2021 might have single-handedly save LEGO Marvel. After years of stale repetitive builds, uninteresting characters, I think LEGO has found a way to redeem the Marvel line and go back in time and make sets that never had coverage or were poorly covered. But there's one last thing that LEGO needs to do to make the Marvel line perfect, and that is give us more X-Men sets.